All right then gang, so in this video, I'd like to dive right into the CSS and to begin with focus on some core base styles to style up elements that aren't really gonna change whether we view it on a mobile or a desktop. So things like buttons or input fields and colors. Now I wanna start off by declaring a couple of variables. Now we can create variables in CSS to store values that we might commonly use through different rules. So things like colors or font sizes. Now I'm gonna declare a couple of variables for colors. So I'm just gonna paste this in first of all, and you can see the select I've used is colon root. And what that does is select the root element inside the document, so the HTML tag in this case. And it means that whatever variables we define right here, we can use in selectors which target any of the items inside the HTML document. Okay, so inside the root selector, I say double dash and then the name of whatever variable I want to use. I've called it primary, you can call it what you want, and the value is this yellow color. The second one is called secondary, and I've used a blue color. So now we can just refer to these variables in the future to use these colors. And if we need to change the colors, we change it once up here and not several times where we use it down below. Okay, so they're the variables. The next thing I wanna do is a quick reset because I want to reset some of the default browser styles. We can see that without any of our own styles, already the browser has styled the H1, the H2, they made them larger, and bold, also the anchor tags that underlined and the li tags have these little circle icons and also the ul has a margin. As well as these things, these also have margins as well, top and bottom. So I wanna strip out some of those default browser styles so that we have more of a blank slate to work with. So to do that, first of all, I'm gonna target the li tags and remove these little icons. And to do that, we say list hyphen style hyphen type this one and set that to none. So if I save this now, we're gonna strip out those little circle icons, awesome. And the next thing I want to do is take out some of the margin and the padding and also the text decoration of these things. So I'm just gonna grab a few different things at once. I'm gonna say body and also P tags, A tags, ULs and LIs. And then inside, I'm gonna say margin is zero. Also, the padding will be zero and also the text decoration is gonna be none. Okay, so if we save that, then it should strip out a lot of the margin and padding of these things up here, and also remove the underline for the anchor tags because of this thing right here. Okay, so that's the basic reset. Next, I wanna move on to some base styles, and we'll start with the body tag. So the body right here is gonna have a background color, and it's gonna be this color right here, so we can just use this variable. So all I'm gonna do is say background is then gonna be a variable, and the way we use a variable is saying var, and then in brackets, whatever variable we want to use. So double dash secondary, like so. And it uses this value right here, defined for secondary. So if I save this, check this out. Now we get that background color, awesome. Okay, the next thing I want to do is say overflow in the X direction is gonna be hidden. And the reason I'm doing that is because later on, when we use this image over on the right up here, I'm gonna push it off the screen. I don't want a user to be able to scroll and view that image, okay? So that will become more apparent why we're doing that later on. For now, let's move on to the next thing, which is gonna be for buttons. So this right here, view my work is a button and we can see that because it has a button class, if I can find it up here somewhere. There, we give this a class of button. Also down here at the form, we have a class of button as well. So we're gonna style up that class. So let me say dot button. And in here, first of all, I'm gonna say the background is gonna be none because by default down here, we do have a background on this. It's an input field. We don't on this anchor tag, but because we have an input field down here with a class and button, I wanna strip that background out as well. So background none, the border is going to be two pixels, it's gonna be solid, and the color is again gonna be a variable, and this time dash dash, and it's going to be primary. So that's the yellow color we used. So after that, I'm gonna say the color of the text inside the button is gonna be a variable, and it's also gonna be primary, so the color of the yellow again and then the padding of a button is gonna be six pixels top and bottom, and also 12 pixels left and right. We also want a border radius, 
which makes it more circular at the edges at the corners. So we'll say border radius is going to be 20 pixels. Then after that, I want to say text transform, and that is going to be uppercase. And then let's just see how this looks so far. All right, looking pretty good and looking pretty good up here as well. I just want to do a couple more things. I want to say the box shadow, just to give it a little drop shadow at the back, is going to be one pixels, two pixels, three pixels, and then RGBA. And we use A right here to add an alpha channel at the end, which means we can add a bit of opacity. And the value inside here is going to be 000, which is black RGB. And then the opacity is going to be 0 0.6. All right, so this is only going to be a subtle drop shadow, but if I save it, we can view that little drop shadow now right here, okay? All right, so now we want to also display this as inline hyphen block. That's going to help us with styling that later on and adding some margin to it, all right? Cool. So that is the button class done. I also want a hover effect, so I'm going to say button hover. And in this case, I want the color of the text to be a bit darker, so no longer yellow, 222, like a dark gray. And the background this time is going to be a variable, which is going to be the secondary, or rather, no, the primary color again, because that's the yellow color. So save that, and if we hover, we can see we now get that style right here. So this is the benefit of using variables, by the way. We can just use variables right here instead of outputting the same hex code over and over again. Then if we want to update the theme or the colors of our site in the future, we just change that value once at the top and then it's going to automatically update everywhere else. We don't have to change all these anymore. So that's why we're using variables. Okay, so we've done the buttons now. I also want to style up the input fields down here because they're not really going to change that much as we go from a small screen to a large screen. So let me say input and also text area, which is this one right here, this one. So text area and input and inside here, we're going to give this a background color. So background and that is going to be RGBA again. So we can add an alpha channel 255, 255, 255, which is white. Then add some opacity, 0 0.05. So it's going to be a really faint white and we should see a lot of the blue from underneath the background poking through. So it should be kind of like a blue, similar to this background color, but a bit lighter. So if we save it, we can see that right here and it almost looks the same. Okay, so now I'm going to say padding is going to be 10 pixels in the top and bottom direction and 16 pixels left and right. Border radius is going to be 20 pixels to make it softer at the corners as well, much like the button. And the border itself is going to be two pixels solid. And I'm going to use a hex code for this because we're only going to use it probably once inside our CSS file. And that is going to be 9893D8. Okay, so if I save it and take a look, that's looking a bit better. All right. So next, I just want to do a color of the text. If I type in at the minute, it's probably going to be black. Yep, it is. I want to make it more of kind of light gray when a user types into it. So color is going to be F2, F2, F2. All right, so save that. And you can see now it's looking a bit better. So I think that's about it. They're all of our base core styles for this website. So now we've styled up these things, the buttons, We've stripped away some of the default browser styles and also we've added these variables right here. And by the way, the reason I'm previewing this just in a small screen and I'm not doing this full screen like this is because remember, we're using a mobile first approach. So at the minute, we're just concerned about making it look good on mobiles like this. Now, in the next video, I want to address the fonts and add in a custom font as well. So we'll take a look at that next.